So we just found out no racing for 30 days. Looks like Houston. I'm bored already. That gypsy in me. I uh, feel like I need to go somewhere. So here's what I'm going to do. I am in the process of cleaning up helmets. I've got a few of them. I figured I'd take a few minutes and uh, show you guys my helmets and maybe tell a little bit about all of them. That's kind of my plan. You're going to see a lot of this kind of stuff. <laughs> I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing, but we'll see. All right, y'all. So, since we've got a little extra time, we're not at the racetrack, I thought I would do a few things, maybe give a little bit of uh, history. Kind of the first thing I thought of was my helmets. You can see sitting around here, there are helmets. I love my helmets. I'm attached to my helmets and I keep my helmets. So since I got so many of them, I thought I might share a story or two with, with my helmets. Uh, the reason I'm attached to them, kind of the things that I've done while wearing them. I'm gonna grab this one in particular right here. So this helmet here is a bell helmet that I wore in 2004 we worked with the racetrack in Memphis right before the Mid-South Nationals and Elvis Presley Enterprises. What was cool about that, it was the 50th anniversary of Elvis's first single. And we worked with the racetrack and NHRA and I did a burnout in front of Graceland. It was one of the coolest things ever. So had this bad boy on, I even got a pair of blue driving shoes, even though Elvis really didn't do blue suede shoes, but people kind of associate it with that. But anyway, had a helmet painted. He Dared to Rock was the theme. And I got to do a burnout in front of Graceland. So it was really cool. So they had this thing scripted down to the minute. We had to work with the city of Memphis. We had to work with Shelby County, which is the county that Memphis is located in because the road in front of Graceland is a very busy road. And so we had to uh, get the road closed. We had to have everything that we have at the racetrack, we had to have there, which included, you know, obviously fire truck, ambulance, lots of policemen, mainly because we were closing the road down. And we had to have a catch net. So they made a device that would hook to the back of a truck and they attached it to a telephone pole on one side and to the truck on the other. And we come out and we did some talking we uh, had the car covered up and we actually unveiled the car, which was really cool. And, and it had this, uh, he dared to rock on there. So that was kind of neat. Jack Soden, the president of Elvis Presley Enterprises, Jason Rittenberry, who was the president of Memphis International Raceway and me. Uh, we all talked just a little bit, spent a few minutes talking about Elvis, talking about doing the burnout in front of Graceland and what that meant to me, which was huge because of, I've lived near the Memphis area my whole life. And so we finally, uh, we, we have more people there than I ever imagined. We did this like on a Tuesday or a Wednesday during the week. So I didn't think that many people would be there, but it turned out there was a lot. And if you've ever been to Graceland, you kind of know how this is set up. So you've got Graceland on one side of the road. There's two lanes of traffic. There's a median. Then there's two more lanes of traffic. And on the other side of that is where Elvis's airplanes are on display, which people can go through. So they made the, all the fans that were there had to be on the other side of both of these lanes so that they were behind the fence over by the airplanes. So Mike Clover was my crew chief back then. And now um, we start the car up, do this big nasty burnout. We back up from the burnout and I lost my mind, absolutely. Jumped out of the car, started throwing gloves and just pitching stuff everywhere. And all the people came from behind the fence out into the road and the police were saying, we gotta get the road clear, we gotta get the road clear. And, and, and Mike tells them, if you get that little guy out there that's doing all the talking and you move him, all the people will go away. So there you have it. It was one of the coolest things ever to do a burnout in front of Graceland wearing this helmet, he dared to rock. 
Elvis is the man. There's my history on this particular helmet right here. It was pretty cool. So we just talked about the old Elvis helmet. Let's, uh, let's continue talking about helmets. Let me just grab another one here. So this helmet says right there, overtime. So Don and I got married in 1985. I'm horrible at math, but I think that makes it like 35 years. So you can see this helmet, it's, it was my very first custom painted helmet. And I was bracket racing. I've been bracket racing since I was 15 years old. And the reason it has overtime on it, so we got married when I got out of high school. She was out of high school already because she's older than me. I was a freshman dating a junior in high school, which made me the man. She had a driver's license and I didn't. But anyway, overtime. So I, after I got out of school and we got married, end up getting a job at the Kroger Food Warehouse. You know, so we're young. We got a family going. Got lots of bills. You know, we we lived in a in a mobile home. We li we didn't live in a trailer park. We lived in Memal's backyard. But anyway, so. The deal that her and I made was my normal weekly check at Kroger, you know, 40 hour week check, that went to pay the bills, pay for that house trailer. And any overtime that I worked, that could go towards racing. So every opportunity I got, I did overtime. And that was, you know, that was a way to go racing. And it kept the bills paid and we were able to uh, keep doing all that and I was able to keep racing. And I did it with overtime. So this helmet got some chips and dings, but lots of memories, lots of bracket races in that helmet right there. So, all right. So that was uh, overtime helmet. Let me show you all this helmet right here. So this helmet definitely wore during my Werner days. As you can see, it is a Werner themed helmet with the Werner logo and the stripes like they have on their trucks and trailers. See a lot of uh, cool sponsored logos. And oh, one other thing I, I didn't talk about on the Elvis helmet thing that we did is I've been taping up my visor for years and years and years. So essentially, I don't know if you can, if I can see this correctly, but you can see I've got this blocked off. And the reason I did that was from all my years of bracket racing, I find it hard not to look over at the finish line. And in a top fuel car going 300 and something miles an hour, you're going to wiggle around. So a lot of times when you see cars wiggle, we're looking. We're not looking at a target of looking, not looking where we should be going. We're looking to see where the other car is at. So I've been doing the visor thing for, for a long time now. And sometimes it helps, sometimes it don't. I still find myself trying to look. Back to this helmet. So this helmet, I was wearing while well, Kenny Koretsky, Captain Chaos, owned the race team. Shortly after Peter Lehman had sold it, because still got a Lehman logo on the back. But we won the IHRA championship while I was wearing this helmet. And Kenny Koretsky told me, he's like, I want that helmet. And, you know, everybody knows Kenny as Captain Chaos. I said, Captain, man, I, I, I love my helmets and I hold on to them. And I don't really want to, like, give it to you. And he's like, you give me that helmet. I want that helmet. I wanted him. 
in my office. I want everybody to be able to see it. You know, we won the world championship. So, I, this is a big word for me. I begrudgingly packaged this helmet up, and I sent it up to the captain, up to Pennsylvania. Packaged real nice to take care of it. I mean, this thing's old. It still looks good. So, in the package, I put a note, and the note wasn't to the captain. It was to Karen, his wife. I said, Karen, when the time is right, please send this helmet back to me. <laughs> so, old captain, he gets his package. He opens it up. He sees this letter that I wrote to Karen. When the time's right, please send this helmet back to me. So, the captain's like, you dirty dog, you. You were in the wheel, and you're still in the wheel, but all you're going to get is that freaking helmet back. So, Captain remodeled the uh, office here not too long ago, within the last year or two. And I get a package. It came back. Um, so, I got it back. So, I, I just love my helmets, and I can go on and on. I mean, there's a, there's a lot of cool helmets over here. I'm just going to grab it. It's not like the most professional way to do this but i love them so i mean you can see there's like i said there's a lot of Werner helmets that was i liked i liked uh this one i loved how we did my name on that it's kind of a 60s style no gas torco time 0104 stuff and this helmet here this this helmet is kind of cool so that helmet was shortly after we lost dalton I got this helmet painted, and, you know, it's kind of got the uh, the Blue Thunder theme to it with the lightning bolts and the 25. So, had to get that done. I'll kind of show you all the back of these helmets. A lot of times, you never see these things. Oh, I really want to show you the back of this helmet. I always really like this particular helmet here. Again, Werner Enterprises helmet. So, I thought this was really cool. So it's got the Werner truck, and it rolls around into the Werner trailer, right back into another truck. I always thought that was really, really cool. This was a pretty cool nitro fish helmet right here, too. I thought the fish was pretty awesome. Cool nitro fish. But I love my helmets. I mean, here's a... Uh, let me grab this one. Also, I'm not like doing this all professionally. Here's another cool nitro fish helmet that I wore a little bit. It's pretty cool. I love helmets, y'all. Plain and simple. I can tell stories on pretty much all of these things. I just love helmets. I like them. And I'm trying to drop one. I almost did. I caught it with my foot. Thank goodness. There you have it, folks. Probably way more than y'all care to know about my helmets. But there they are. I love my helmets. Helmets, 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 helmets. I got to be truthful, y'all. So these helmets live here in the shop, and it's not all of them. And I know I said that's it on helmets, but I had thought about it a little more. I'll tell the truth. I probably spent an hour cleaning these things, a lot of them. They get dusty, but it is just a weird, weird thing, y'all. I'm like, a little bit uh, going stir crazy already, ready to go racing, and we ain't even had much time off yet. I mean, we were just in Gainesville where we didn't get to race, but what I'm saying through all this is y'all will probably see quite a few extra little videos from me. Don't know what we'll talk about, but I do know this, like, subscribe, whatever, push all those buttons, do all that stuff, but tune in. Ain't no telling what we're going to be talking about the next couple weeks until I get to go out there and stomp on that loud pedal. Today was helmet day, though. See you guys soon, probably sooner than normal. Again, ready to go racing. Hope everybody's doing okay. Wash your hands. Let's get this, let's kick this coronavirus in the butt and do away with it. So everybody's healthy, good, and back at the racetrack. Talk to you soon.